I previously did a Kamari only run for Final Fantasy X where we saw if we could beat the game using only the Hornless Giant. We did, but then I did something dumb. Like really dumb. I said if that video got 2,000 likes, I would see if Kamari can completely solo the entire post game. This means all Monster Arena, all Dark Aeons, and Penance. Well, screw me, I guess, because you guys hit the like goal in like 12 hours. So, it's time to see if Kimari can go the distance. And let's also see if you guys can beat the previous like record as well. Can this video hit 4,000 likes? Now, with that said, we had a bunch of rules in the original Kimari only run. However, they were designed solely around the main game so this time because of how different the post game is and how we're gonna have to pull out all the stops the only rule we're going to have is kimari is the only character who can act in battle i'm also not going to kill other characters off because that wastes turns which i will most assuredly need however they still can't do actions now step one we're gonna need to prepare for everything by unlocking all the fiends in the monster arena. We had most of them from before, but I still need a few more. And during this process, I also start leveling in the Omega Ruins and Inside Sin. Sadly, with only Kimari really doing anything all run, we can't really abuse the Tomberry leveling method. So, First, we need to do a ton of the Sphere Grid to absolutely get him some better stats than he currently has. Then, we head to Mokalonia and find Gantz near the start of the area. Buy some empty 4-slot weapons and 4-slot armors. I'm debating how much I'll use the weapons right now, but we're absolutely going to make a bunch of different armors. Using the items we got from the Catcher side quest, we're going to make our first armor, which will help us with a huge chunk of what we need to do. First, throw on Ribbon, Auto Protect, Auto Shell, and Auto Haste. This is only a temporary armor and will be replaced a lot later, but this will handle all the grinding we need to do for now. At this point, I try to fight Sleep Sprout with my new armor, but still get manhandled, so we need a few more levels. So I head back to Omega Ruins to grind more stats. With his current stats, it's really not hard for him to one-shot everything here. Ribbon protects me from Great Marlboro, meaning there's pretty much no threat here for him other than Tonberry, so I flee from them as a safety measure. Eventually, we max out the Sphere Grid on its base stage and remove all lock nodes and get all abilities. Now, we need to do two things. The first is to stat max, and the second is for me to tell you about the sponsor of this video so that they can pay for everything we need. Though the Heavens Fall, an early access title aimed at those who miss old school turn-based JRPGs. Think ahead of the curve in battles to make the most out of the new synergy system instead of in the moment actions. Craft your own gear with an in-depth crafting system where every item made is totally unique. And to top it all off, there's nine playable characters allowing you to have endless creativity with your party setup with a ton of goofy and relatable dialogue between them a must-have game for atelier fans learn more at the link down below in the description now back to the farming talk we're gonna need a bunch of bribes to make all our different armors and while it's absolutely the most boring way of farming gil it is the best way in terms of gil per hour so Farm Sleep Sprout for Teleport Spheres. Once you're capped, go to Killica and buy Hunter Swords. Customize them with Evade Encounter and then sell them for a profit. This earns you about 8 million gil per hour, since each unit costs 1,875 gil to buy the weapon, and it sells for 27,812, meaning you get 25,937 gil profit 
every weapon. And you get two teleport spheres per fight. This means every fight is essentially 51,874 gil, minus the cost of the fight anyway. Also, if you get lucky, or well, unlucky in this situation, and end up getting tons of dark matters, use them to add ribbon to a couple other armors. Next, we want bribes. The items we want are chocobo wings from Machia, mega elixirs from Varuna, wings to discovery from Marlboro, and X potions from Valaha. Then, we need to kill a few mobs for some items. Blessed gems come from Cacta King. We can mug light curtains from Tankert, or we can beat Fafnir for 20 to 40 of them. And lunar curtains come from Tankert as a rare steal. So, we also need Master Thief for that. Don't feel too bad if you can't get all these items just yet. We'll be working on them while trying to stat max, since our goal now is to work through the fiends to max our stats. So, we need to kill Ironclad for HP, Vidator for MP, Juggernaut for strength, Tankert for defense, One Eye for magic defense, Jumbo Flan for magic, Fenrir for agility, Pterix for evasion, Hornet for accuracy, and finally, Greater Sphere for luck. We're going to start with the easy ones like Juggernaut for strength, since once that's maxed, we're pretty much always going to do max damage to everything. Hornet for accuracy, however, be warned, there is a chance for him to kill Kimari. It's rare, but it's there. And then we're going to do Tankert for defense, and Tankert is another one who can absolutely kill us at this point. And the last easy one is one eye now we only need about 60 or so of each of these spheres but plan ahead and farm a couple extra in case of making a mistake when clearing nodes it happens to me every single time where i clear wrong nodes and these fights are quick and easy enough that it doesn't take too much longer plus any extra dark matter will also be nice now, before we start deleting nodes, though, we're gonna farm magic from Jumbo Flan, since, sadly, it needs magic to kill it, and it's also the one which drops magic. So, if we clear the grid right now, we can potentially get it, so we can't really hurt it. So, at the start of the fight, use a 3 stars or twin stars to remove the MP cost, and then use double cast ultimate. Use an X potion to heal when you get low, but make no mistake, this will take ages just like greater sphere who we use a different armor for for this fight we're going to use auto protect auto haste defense 20 percent and auto potion also sell off all potions and high potions this way auto potion will use x potion fully healing us he does counter with ultimate as well but after our basic stat maxing not counting luck this is almost an impossible way to lose it just takes time so now we have our luck spheres we need fortune spheres which means Earth Eater. And this goes the same way. He counters with Flare, which we auto heal using X potions. Once all is said and done and you've done your stat maxing, your sphere grid will look like this. Just note, however, you don't need this much agility or evasion. Because of maxing luck, you don't need any more than 60 evasion, and agility caps at 170. But there was a few nodes left over, so I placed a few more down. Accuracy is pointless now that we've grinded luck as well, so feel free to replace all your accuracy nodes, since max luck means we never miss and will always get critical hits now i'll be clear i hate using break hp limit but i don't know if it's going to be needed later with us only having kimari so i maxed it out just in case so let's clear out the early fights in the monster arena now i did however mess up on marlboro menace and forgot my ribbon armor so i slowly died to poison a simple armor change though and he gets murdered and we continue down the list once we get to cactus king though we need to get creative because not only does he attack with 99,999 needles he also counters with 10,000 needles which means i need my break hp limit armor for this one which proved entirely unneeded as the second attempt he didn't even hit kimari just my luck really then 
we get to one of the worst ones, Don Tomberry, who one shot me as a counter since karma damage is based on how many mobs I've killed. Honestly, I'm not sure how I'm going to get past this, ignoring the other characters. So, let's try an auto life method first. My idea is to cast auto life, attack, the Tombay will kill me, and then I'll reapply auto life and repeat the process since until the Tomberry gets right up next to us, the only thing he has is the counter attack. And Kimari's speed means I can get an attack in very easily after auto life. And thankfully, it works because honestly, if it didn't, I have no idea how I would have killed this fight. The next three go down without issue, and so we are now a third of the way done with Monster Arena post-game, since now the area conquest is done, that just leaves species conquest and the original creations left, but we've already done two of the original creations and nine of the species quest fights, which means we only have four left to do, which is Ornithalestis, Nega Elemental, Sleep Sprout and Bomb King. However, we can remove Sleep Sprout from the list as well because we killed that when farming Gil. So, just three left to do. Wonderful Estes and Bomb King go down nice, easy, and quickly. But Nega Elemental is a little slower because he loves to counter every hit with Ultima. A little times 4 speed though makes that more bearable. After all, the Ultima spam we had to do earlier while farming and... You know, it gets, it gets tedious. And with that, Monster Arena is two-thirds done. Now, we just have the original creations left. Before we continue on, though, I decide I need to go and get Kimari's last two overdrives, being Bad Breath and Nova. Bad Breath is easy enough. We just have to fight a Marlboro in the arena. And for Nova, we're going to go kill Omega Weapon, which also means we can kill Ultima Weapon on the way. I was saving him to bribe, but in the end, I figured I don't really need to do that. And yeah, he gets one shot. Maybe I should have done this earlier for a little challenge, but at least Omega will survive a few more hits. Not many though, as once we get Nova, I just use it for style. And then after a few more hits, he goes down. Okay, now back to the calm lands we go. So, Catastrophe is first. And he murders me hard because I forgot auto life and didn't have break HP limits. So, I try again. This time with both of them. And I use the twin stars to reduce my MP cost to zero. And then use Quicket to get some extra turns in. This time around, 100 Needles still did 26,000 damage to me, but I easily survived and then a few more hits later and he also went down. Surprisingly though, his Demi didn't break the damage cap. Fubin is a lot more of a pain in the butt because of his really high HP pool, which really is all he has going for him. He can dispel buffs like auto life, and he does have a hit which does about 50,000 damage, but all in all, still isn't much to worry about. The fight just takes a lot of time with quick hit spam and quick pocket X potions. Now, onto Knee Slug, who freaking sucks. Firstly, Ribbon Armor goes on and we need to keep auto life up constantly as we will be dying in this fight. Likewise, every time we do die, reapply auto life and use twin stars to remove the MP cost. Then spam a quick hit until he enters into his shell. At this point, melee attacks don't do anything. So we have to switch over to double casting Ultima. Yay, more Ultima spam. But while he's in the shell, he gains a potent regen and casts Kyorger on himself. After enough spamming Ultima, his shell will eventually break, and when this happens, he's nearly dead. So you can go back to spamming Quick Hit to finish him off. Now, it's just Ultima Buster and Shinryu left. But before I fight Ultima Buster, I kind of forgot to heal, so I game over instantly. Second attempt, auto life and twin stars as normal, then double cast an ultimate to kill the arms and the head. Once that's done, I move on to quick hits for the main body. 
He uses ultimate as his main damage deal, but that only deals about 1,200, so I don't need to worry too much about healing. And when I do need to heal, because I don't have break HP limit on, I can wait until I get to yellow health and use an elixir. When the arms respawn as well, I just use another double cast ultimate. This is a boring back and forth with another HP sponge. What I just described repeats itself for 10 minutes straight before he eventually goes down. Then we have a problem. Shinryu is a water fight limited to Tidus, Waka, and Riku. I tried everything possible to get Kimari into this fight, using a bunch of different mods and tools, but it just wouldn't work. Now here's the thing, Shinryu's main gimmick is his Petrify and Shatter, but Ribbon protects against them, and the fight is honestly the easiest in the original creatures, so I know Kimari can absolutely crush him. So, we're going to pretend he did, and I'm going to use a mod to unlock Nemesis so we can try that. I don't like the idea of not being able to try Nemesis solo because of the silly water restriction after all. Now, for Nemesis, I swap back over to my defense at 20% armor as well. Then, just like before, we start with Auto Life and Twin Stars, and I get destroyed. This setup is how I normally do it, but hey, three characters is a huge difference to just one. So, we're going to have some fun here. First, get a 1 MP weapon for Kimari, either as a drop from the monster arena or customize it using 3 stars. Then, once the fight begins, put up auto life, which now costs 1 MP. Then, throw a candle of life at him to inflict the one and only status effect he's vulnerable to. Doom. Yes, that ability nobody ever uses, and most forget it's also one of Kimari's overdrives as well. And now, every turn we just need to apply auto life it will revive us after all of his attacks and then in 255 turns he dies ptsd flashbacks from pbird mod now yes this is cheesy and depending on the character it is entirely possible to solo nemesis in 20 to 30 minutes which is a lot faster than the 45 minutes this attempt took the problem with that is you have to pay attention the whole fight and keep track of his Armageddon counter. You see, his attacks add an amount of points to a hidden tracker, and when it reaches 22, he uses Armageddon, and if you lose track of it, it can potentially be very, very bad. So I did what I do best. I put some anime on the second monitor and just kept hitting X for 45 minutes. I was watching Grace by the Gods, if anybody is wondering. Also, nice to go back and revisit an anime I've not seen for a while. Now, with that, the monster arena is complete, which leaves us the Dark Aeons and Penance. Before that though, I'm just going to refill all my items that I've used in the monster arena because we're going to die a lot and burn through a lot. But without further ado, let's go. And Dark Veilfer at Besaid is up first. I get a few hits in before using Auto Life in preparation for the Overdrive. And then, once it brings me back, I'm a little unsure if I can survive the next hit. So I Auto Life again just in case. But it's unneeded as I survive and Auto Potion heals me back to full. Then I just hit a few more times for the win. Next up is Dark Ifrit at B Canal. And we have to watch out for his Media Strike here, which can delay us. His overdrive deals about 30,000 damage as well, so we're going to use break HP limits for this. The general rundown is to hit him hard and fast with quick hits, then when my health gets a little low, I switch to double cast drain to deal about 20,000 damage and heal 20,000. After a little bit though, I switch to the quick pocket and X potion combination instead, as my health builds up a lot faster due to avoiding his melee counter attack. And then go back to quick hits. This one is more of a 6 minute dance than anything. It's not exactly hard, just a little slow. But 
there's two down. So, next up is Dark Ixion in the Thunder Plains. This is a fight where Break HP Limit and Ribbon comes in nice. I did, however, forget about Thunder Jerk having delay on it. It wasn't too much of a problem at first while I was getting some quick hits in, but then he used it like 12 to 15 times in a row. Not sure, I didn't count them. But it was enough to drop me down to just 15,000 HP. Thankfully, that was the last one. And then, after an arrow spark, I counted for the kill. But now, we're on to phase 2 of the fight. But phase 2 is much easier and we just spam quick hit and end it in 2 minutes for the third Dark Aeon kill. Now, we're on to the lovely editor Dav, I mean Shiva. Look, if you play FF14 and understand what happened with Shiva and a dragon, you'll get the reference. At first, things went well. I quick headed away and did a nice chunk of damage. She did end up using Diamond Dust, which nearly killed me, but I healed up with a few quick pockets, only to hit again and then die to Heavenly Strikes. Insta kill effect, which sadly goes through Ribbon. Attempt 2 ends early when she uses Heavenly Strike on Kimari again, but Attempt 3 is where things work well. She tries to hit Kimari a few times with her melee attack, which gets countered, letting me get some extra damage in. She doesn't Heavenly Strike Kimari, and I choose not to heal. Shiva has 1.1 million HP, which means I need 12 hits to kill her, which I get and she goes down. Sadly, that's the end of the easy dark aeons though, and we move on to the much, much harder ones, starting with Dark Bahamut. Now, there's a few ways we can tackle this, but some of them are risky, so we're going to go with the method that is absolutely positive to work. It just takes time. So to start with, we keep our ribbon, break HP limits, auto haste and auto protect armor on. And then the most important thing is the spirit lance having evade and counter on it. Then we just need a ton of X potions. You see, Bahamut inflicts break with impulse that ribbon does not protect against. However, you only see that when you attack him five times. This means if we don't attack him, we don't see it. And Evade Encounter does not count as an attack. So pull up a chair, pat Daff on the back while she cries as Bahamut slowly gets countered to death. Healing when required as Mega Flare does about 42,000 damage. Also, Drop out uh, auto life for added safety and cheer five times at the start. And then after about six minutes, he eventually goes down for the easiest possible way to kill Bahamut. Hashtag not sorry. Now, let's tackle the sisters, shall we? For this, we're going to need a first strike weapon, as it's going to be impossible to beat all three at once. So we need to split them up by running to the left side and through Mushroom Rock. Once they're split up, we fight Sandy first, who has three attacks. A normal melee attack, Razia, and Mega Graviton as an overdrive. Once the fight starts, throw up Shell to lower the damage from Mega Graviton, and then quick hit away. Every time she's about to get a turn though, make sure to defend in case she uses Razia, which deals about 97,000 damage. Defend lowers that a lot though. Then, use Quick Pockets to heal up and get a quick hit in. When the Overdrive bar is full, just attack away. Mega Graviton does basically nothing to us with Shell and Ribbon, so it lets us get some nice damage in. Eventually, she'll die, which means we can move on to Mindy next. Mindy is an interesting fight. It can be really easy or really hard. Start off with Shell and Twin Stars and Auto Life, then quick hit away. You're gonna die to Posado, so when it happens, if her overdrive is full, throw up Shell to survive Mega Graviton. If it's not full, then use Auto Life in case of another Posado. If she uses Calamity, then great, free turn. Once both are down though, it's time for Cindy. 
setup shall and twin stars and of course auto life now this fight is a little interesting the regular attack from her dispels positive buffs like auto life and shell but it does not remove the mp0 ability which works out great since kami said reduces mp to zero so this way we can still use our abilities like quick pocket which normally costs mp also, try to keep your HP above 65,000 to survive Commissade. It's not a hard fight, just a little long and requires more potions than the previous two. And you can't attack as much, which makes her 3 million HP take a little bit longer to knock down. But it eventually gets there and voila, all three sisters are down. So now we have just Dark Yojimbo and dark anima left however i'm afraid this is where things take a turn dark yojimbo is sadly not possible for kimari to solo zanmato removes auto life and there's only two ways of winning this fight kill him before he uses it or block it with an Aeon. Now, the first three forms of this fight can be done with Kimari by using Quick Hits and dispelling the Fall Break from his Kozuka attack. However, after each stage, Yojimbo charges his Overdrive faster and faster. By the fourth fight, it's impossible to avoid a Zanmato with a solo character unless you cheese it with Titus or Walker. Slice and Dice or Attack Reels allows you to do enough damage to kill fight four and five before he uses Zanmodo. And so, sadly, this is impossible for him. How about Dark Anima? Sadly, again, this isn't possible. Well, technically, by a mathematical standpoint, it is. But in order to defeat Dark Anima with a solo character, you must have auto life up for every pain attack as it bypasses all protection to death. Sounds simple, right? Well, it is. The problem is when Anima gets their overdrive and uses pain right after it. You see, Oblivion is absolutely going to kill you and use your auto life. However, it also fully drains your MP to zero. So even if you had twin stars up, dying takes the effect away. And with no MP, it means you can't use auto life. So you have one turn to heal up with an elixir. If it's pain, game over. If it's a normal attack, you can continue with auto life. If it's Mega Graviton, you can only survive it if you have auto shell on. AKA, you need to go through with a godlike RNG. And having searched online for far longer than I care to admit, actually, I can't actually find anybody who has managed to solo anima with any character because of this very reason. Likewise, Penance is the same, and sadly, not able to be soloed. Now, you might have seen the German video on the emulator of somebody soloing Penance with Oren. I'm afraid to say this is fake and very easily proven. Watch the videos and notice how the arms never cast Calamity or Terra Graviton. And of course, his Oren's name is changed, showing the file is modded because normally you cannot edit Oren's name. And so we have reached the end of our Kimari only run. We can complete the game, do all of the monster arena, including Nemesis, as long as you pretend Shinryu doesn't exist because of a silly water combat, and we have defeated all but two of the Dark Aeons. If I was to spend the next three years doing attempt after attempt at anima, I'm sure I'd eventually get the lottery win for that as well, but it's absolutely impossible for Kimari to solo Yojimbo and of course Penance. But hey, not bad for a hornless roncer, right? Now, 
shameless plug. If you want to help the channel out tremendously in our efforts to hire an editor full time, to not only also get early access to challenges, but two new weekly series that will also start once we're able to hire Daff full time. And there's going to be an exclusive sneak peek at them both in the next week. So absolutely sign up for that. And of course, take a look at our merch shop where we have insane hoodies, pint glasses, and stickers for you to stick a bomb somebody with. But the biggest thing you should absolutely do, join our Discord server, linked below. We have one of the most fun communities of adult gamers around, offering sensible conversations and a huge love for games in general. Not just Final Fantasy, along with other passions and a very active, not safe for work section. Lastly, if you want to be my super big friend, come follow me on Twitter, also linked down below along with my other social medias in Linktree. But until next time, everybody, make sure you subscribe to both me and Daff so you don't miss the next exciting challenge video. As always, everybody, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.